Well, good morning. Today's January 10th, and I'm just checking um, some soaps that I made. I did an experiment because I'm trying to learn how to do different um, natural soaps using natural colors, like herbs and seeds and things uh, that you can soak in oil to infuse the uh, color. So this one is really pretty because yellow is like one of my favorite colors. But um, it, it used annatto seeds. So I did, it was kind of tricky because it's such a tiny batch and I was mixing in little little jugs and it's kind of hard to get the soap to um, come to trace with such a small amount. But um, it does look different when I flip them over. Now this is the part obviously that was in the mold and the underside was at the top, but look at the difference in how bright that color is. And I got this one wet because I think they, I don't know, it's kind of like they do get soap ash on them, which is what this is. It's like just really pale and it washes right off, but it, it happens if um, oxygen gets to it. Totally normal. But look at the difference in the color from the top. Now this I had um, while it was curing which is really probably not quite done. I, it's been 24 hours since I made it, but um, I put a uh, piece of parchment, this piece here, right on top and touched it right to it. And it seems like it's done quite a good job of keeping the color as it should be. And this one's just white with no color put to it. I added a little titanium dioxide, which is natural. <clears throat> A natural way to add, uh, kind of whiten the soap, but look at that, it's like a pure white soap, it's beautiful. Uh, I have to get my notes to remember exactly what I did with these. This one, number five, was after I mixed up this one, which had no white in it, and it was all infused annatto, I poured off half of it, and then I added uh, titanium dioxide to make it like a a tint, a tint of number one. So this one is a bit paler. Isn't it cool though? It's just so cool. It looks like a beautiful cut. I'd love to paint my kitchen or something these colors, this yellow. I love a soft yellow. So these were, um, let's see, this one I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I have to go and check my notes, <clears throat> is half the amount of annatto or infusion and then the other half was normal olive oil so it's just like a thinner version of it. I'll turn it over because I think you can see the bottom better, the color from the bottom. This one was um, <clears throat> mixed with titanium dioxide to get it uh, very white, um, you know, a paler tint. It's not a shade the proper in painting, if you mix a white with a color, it's a tint. If you want to make a shade of a color, you mix black with it. So now I'm going to cut into this little mini loaf that I made. And I can't wait to see if any of the swirls will show up because I tried to pour it so that the colors would go into each other. And then you go back and forth to get it to swirl. So let's see if it if it did anything. I set up the uh, my little cell phone the best I can and I'm going to try to cut these. I did look at my notes really quick and I was right that what the order of these are. This one is just the 100% infused oil that I made with the annatto. This one is just plain olive oil instead of annatto and it has titanium dioxide for the whiteness. This one was um, half the amount of infused annatto oil with half olive oil, so it's kind of like half the strength of this one, and no titanium dioxide. So you can see it is a bit different, not a huge difference. Um, this one was half of the infused annatto oil and half with the plain olive oil, uh, which is what this is. 
but I added titanium dioxide to it. So you can see how it really makes it quite a nice tint. And the fifth one is half of this mixture, which was all infused um, annatto oil, and um, it, I added titanium dioxide to it. So you can see that there. Now I'm anxious to cut this this one, so I'm going to move these out of the way. And get I've got this little cutter here, which yeah, it works okay. Sometimes um, I don't like the way sometimes things do move around though. Um, no, I think I need a uh, screwdriver underneath. There we go. Get a little tighter. And I have tried using these cutting blades. I don't really like them very much. This one, first of all, doesn't have a sharp edge at all. It really should have a knife edge on it. I wish I had my dad here do the use his grinding wheel. He'd put a edge on. He could put an edge on anything. And then you've got the crinkle cut one, which is kind of cool. But I usually end up just using my knife. So let me see what I. I also think it'd be nice to get a, a wire cutter, which I've seen um, they seem to do quite a nice job. Let's see what we've got here. I don't know how hard it'll get, so it might be good to cut it sooner than later. And I didn't, I didn't put any scent in it, but it has a real pleasant scent. So I'm not sure what that's, what that's about. Here first, I guess. <clears throat> I could cut the edge, the end off, but I might even just plane that off. Um. Well, let's give it a... Hmm. I don't think it's going to want to do that with this. Let's see here. Let's try the straight blade and see if it works. So if you can see that. There you go. It's just a little one that I got. Hmm. Let's see if we can cut this. All right, that seemed okay. Let's see how that came out. I hope we got some swirls. Oh, cool. So we got some some swirling there. You can see the blade has dragged it down a bit. Uh, that's not too nice, but um, yeah, it's got a, a nice smell to it. Just a nice natural smell. I think that's kind of cool the way it went. I was trying to see what would happen with the different colors. I got some fuzz on there on my sweater. There. Well, let's wipe that blade off a little bit. I think if I had it a little bit wet, it might cut better, but I don't want to get the soap wet. Okay, let's try another one. This is what I notice with this cutter. Now, I do have it in straight, but the soap moves. So I'm going to turn it this way and push the soap against the end because what's happening is it's shifting and it's making it cut the soap bar crooked. Got to use quite a, little, quite a bit of force on it. Okay. Oh. Might as well try the second one. I've never used the second slot. Okay, well, let's see what these look like so far. Nice big chunky soap. This was just a little soap mold that I used. Oh, that's a pretty one. Look at that. I really don't know if it's, uh, if it's picking up the color as well as it. It's nice. It's like uh, sherbet. Kind of reminds me of melting sherbet, you know. I'll set those over here so I don't knock into them. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Now, um, from what I've heard, that the when you use the 
natural different colors. Sometimes they develop over the curing period. Sometimes if you used indigo, they will actually develop and get stronger. I don't know what these will do, so I'm just going to have to see. I think it works better cutting it from this side and holding the soap. It's just hard to get my blade back out. Yep. To find an, a better way though, because I don't like the way the blade is um, kind of scratching the soap a bit. There you go. That looks pretty on that side. Let me see. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, so much fun. It really is so much fun doing this. And I'm using all natural, wonderful ingredients that are good for your skin. And I would even call this soap recipe a uh, silky soap because when you wash your hands with it, it just feels so silky and slippery. Now, the thing I like about this little cutter is it also, on the bottom, it has a planer a blade that if I took any of my soaps, I could cut the cut them on there to, um, let's say it had a, well, let's see, this is an end piece. Well, I'll use the thicker one. Where's the one that was the end? I think that, yeah, that's the one. And usually you don't leave the end like that. You cut it, cut it off. So if I just run it over this, it planes it off. Just push it over with even pressure. And I like to turn it around, do it from different sides. See that? Now it's totally smooth, beautiful. Doesn't have that. Let's try to do it on the side that got a little scratched. Mm hmm. That's something also. Oh, yeah. You know what? That cleans it up so much. I could see the stripes so much better. I think I'm going to give them all a little, just a little planing. <clears throat> Let's see what it does for this end piece here. And then the scraps you save, especially if they don't have um, herbals or botanicals in it, like bits of leaves or flowers or anything. You can just put that in um, a soap dispenser with water and it'll dissolve and it makes a good liquid hand soap. So I put them into a, a big container I've got. Now the other thing you do, I've got an old um, potato peeler and you just go around all the edges and you take it and you go around each edge and it just um, takes that sharp edge off and it feels nicer when you hold it in your hand. Now the soap is still quite soft so be careful doing it. Yeah, can you see how it bevels the, oh, getting my shadow in the way, it bevels the edge nicely. So when you get handmade soap, there's a lot of, a lot of work goes into it. Yeah, but I, I think it's great fun. So I'm going to try to plane these all a bit and we'll see how they come out. Well, what I should have done, I forgot I had my piece of parchment. This is the big container that I put the shavings in. So you can see it's not full yet, but there's some in there. And I had this parchment in there, which should have gone on the table. Make it a little easier to clean up. But uh, I have a bag, a separate bag, that's for soaps without um, spices or leaves and things in it. So this is what I would probably use if I was putting some of these into, um, like a little, see here's one I did. This is an empty... It was empty from the store-bought stuff, and you just put some of your soap shavings in there with water, but you can see how kind of thick it is. You play around, give it a good shake once in a while to keep it mixed up, but you play around with uh, how much chips you have to put in to get it to be kind of, you know, come out and feel soapy.
There's still a few in the bottom there. Sometimes they just kind of stay like that. Anyways, um, but these actually make, I think these are something that people sell, make beautiful petals. See, it's like all stripey. Isn't that pretty? Very thin. If I let that dry, it would get like these or more, you know, a little solid feeling, a little more crunchy, not so soft. But uh, I think people use those too as like, um, take one and use it to wash your hands. So that could be kind of fun to try too. Anyways, I'll get these put in here. They would be fun to try to use as soap flakes. But I think that would just get kind of messy for me, me and Gary. normally wear gloves when I'm doing all this, so I'm not handling the soap. Um, if your hands are clean, that's fine, but it's also, if the soap isn't fully cured, you shouldn't really be handling it, but it's fine right now. It's been the past 24 hours. So, that's it for a little soap adventure right now. I might cut these in half and see what the color's like inside, but I'm going to... Mm, I don't know, because they're test ones. I'm going to save them, so maybe I will cut them in half, because I don't need an entire little bar of soap just to show the color. But I'll keep them in a little baggie labeled, maybe scratch the number into the back so I know what number it was. <laughs> it's The thing I like about soap making, it is kind of scientific. You get to do math and to buy batters and try your own mixes and uh, I don't know I always used to like playing with recipes that way so it's fun yeah and it makes beautiful soap just love it okay that's it for now